Okay, let's start. Uh, um, I am going to, to show you. Um, thank you for coming to everybody. My name uh, is uh, Italo Mairo, and uh, I'm going to, to present this talk uh, uh, speaking about uh, custom forms and configuration forms with the uh, Drupal 8 uh, APIs. And uh, I'm going to show uh, a lot of code because there won't be just slides, uh, but uh, a sort of a practical example. And so there will be some code to, to, to look at. So if you want to come closer, probably it will be better for you for, uh, for uh, better see the, the, the code that will be shown. Uh, it's uh, up to you anyway. Um, OK. Just a few words about me. I am an engineer freelance uh, with long standing experience uh, uh, with uh, digital communication, multimedia, GIS, web GIS, open source application, etc. etc. And uh, I've got more than five years uh, full time working experience with Drupal, uh, actually from Drupal, Drupal uh, 7 the end of Drupal 6 and the beginning of Drupal 7, as, and lately uh, on the last few months on Drupal 8. Uh, I'm an individual member of the association, uh, got a website, and uh, Itamai is my Drupal.org uh, username. And uh, this talk will present uh, uh, a practical application of building a custom forms and its configuration form uh, according to the new Drupal 8 uh, uh, object-oriented uh, APIs. And uh, this talk is inspired by the, let's say, best practices and patterns applied in the context of uh, uh, an advanced Drupal 8 project run as a member of the WellNet Drupal Agency. Uh, WellNet is a Drupal Developer Day's gold sponsor, sited in Milan. And a special thanks goes to, from me to Luca Lusso for his mentoring about Drupal 8 uh, object-oriented programming. And Luca is a WellNet technical leader, a web profiler, a creator, devil module maintainer, and more. Okay. Uh, who among you uh, already used the uh, Forms API, already built custom forms on Drupal 8, just to, to know? Okay. Who among you are uh, coder? I mean, used to make custom modules also in Drupal 7. Okay, not so many. Okay. Uh, of course, I just put this slide before, not to forget, at the, at the end, thanks to all the other sponsors who made all this nice meeting possible and well set up and organized. Everything is seemed to, to work well. Okay. Forms API in Drupal 8. Uh, Forms API in Drupal 8 are quite similar to Drupal 7 Forms API because the principle is the same, just build and make forms functioning, being validated and submitted. And in Drupal 8, forms uh, are defined by implementing a, a form builder interface uh, uh, with a basic workflow that is defined by the definition of uh, the form uh, identification uh, name that is uh, returned by the get form ID method. Then there is the main method that uh, builds the form when that we use to, to set up the form with its form elements. Then uh, we have got the possibility to validate the form when uh, a, a submission of an action is, uh, is performed. And uh, at the end, then the final submission of the form. So these uh, are the main methods this uh, interface uh, for, for builder interface implements. Get form ID, build form, validate form, submit form. I will go very quick because I've got a lot of things to show you. So I apologize if I'm, I'm very quick on these. Uh, the forms API in Drupal 8, uh, do they uh, define uh, elements for creating forms? These elements are basically render array that they add to a normal uh, render array and are specified used uh, for forms. In this new version, there has been added the new HTML5 
specific elements that like telephone, email, number, date, URL, that has got bundled inside them validation uh, uh, logics that uh, the Drupal core gives us uh, by itself, and other specific elements uh, like details, language select, uh, and uh, that are uh, 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 an add-on uh, uh, if confronted with Drupal 7. I advise you to, to check you now this page that shows all the, all the possible form elements that are these uh, render array we, we might use to, to, to build the forms. Uh, which, uh, the, the process is uh, the creation, uh, consists in the creation of uh, an array, a render array, then, then uh, is submitted with the, the action submission, uh, submission action, and uh, the, the, the request is made on the same page uh, when uh, Drupal uh, uh, sees uh, the Drupal sees that this request uh, is uh, uh, reached with uh, uh, post data. Then it uh, triggers the validation uh, method, uh, and eventually, if the validation passes, also the submission method. Uh, these uh, uh, logics of building the forms gives uh, to Drupal uh, several advantages uh, uh, because all the, the forms forms are built in a consistent way, HTML way, and these elements are, are might be, this form might be altered by other modules and uh, overridden by other classes. And also the elements, the custom elements uh, that we built might be encapsulated and uh, reused in different situations. Uh, the Drupal uh, form API gives us basic uh, classes to build the forms. Uh, these are mainly three. The form base class, uh, that is the most generic uh, base class for generating forms, uh, that implements the form interface uh, and uh, uses the form state interface as a parameter for building the, the, the form. Uh, and this, is, uh, this will be used by us for building uh, generic forms, and uh, from the most simple to the most complicated uh, and advanced one. Then there are two specific other forms. Uh, one is the confirm form base uh, for providing users with a confirmation action. Uh, we are not going through about this also because it's not so complicated and difficult. It's, uh, just a specialized uh, case. And uh, there is also the config form base uh, class uh, that uh, extends the form base, uh, uh, just giving uh, to us, uh, giving to us uh, uh, improved methods for the interaction with the configuration systems. And it is used for creating configuration forms, uh, like in Drupal set the world uh, setting forms. OK. How to use forms? We might use forms just uh, uh, as a target for uh, a root. We define a root uh, as we were uh, used to define hook menu in Drupal 7. And hook uh, menu in, uh, in Drupal 7 have been uh, replaced by root, roots in Drupal 8 that are defined in uh, um, YAML file. Ah, okay, we've got a problem like this. So in a YAML file inside the module, we define a, a, a root, giving it to him a, a name, an identification, associating a path, and saying in its properties that a form, a class form, will be called instead of a controller, and giving as a parameter to this the name of the of the of the class form file. We are going now to, to go deeper on these. We might use also uh, following the same rules about uh, passing uh, parameters to the roots. We can pass even further parameters uh, to our form when we decide to build it. That's one way. So defining a path and saying that the render array will be a form for this specific part. Otherwise, we might use, uh, we might build uh, the form, uh, let's say, on the runtime of uh, the code, running the code, our code, uh, and just defining uh, a new variable, uh, or property of a class, of a controller, or whatever, of a service, uh, and uh, s calling the, the form builder service in Drupal 8 uh, and calling its method get form. Okay, so we can use the form builder service in in, uh, in Drupal 8 uh, and uh, build on the fly the form as part of a 
another root or whatever we want, just passing the, the name of the form class, the same form class, and some, also some extra parameters that will be available in the build process of the form. That's very interesting because we can, we can decide to build the forms as we set up the, the form structure and also we are able to, to, to call, let's say, to build dynamically forms passing parameters to the form build process. Okay, I've set up an example site, Drupal 8 site, uh, that activates a, a module, a custom module that I called DDD form talk. This module is a scaffold that defines a, a route the same way we were showing the the example before, like this. Okay, so the first one is uh, defines this uh, this root uh, with this class form that renders a form, a form that uh, is defined in this in this file that is cited in the SRC folder of the module inside the form fo inner folder. Uh, in, I mean, respecting the, the PSR for uh, autoloading uh, uh, definitions. Is everything okay? I'm going to quick. I'm going to, are you able to read what I'm showing? Okay. Okay. This, uh, this, first, uh, this first version of the, of the form, it, uh, mm, I mean, uh, is represented by this one. So I'm sim simulating a form in which the user is invited to, to fill uh, some personal information uh, to, let's say, subscribe some magazine, okay, of the, of the site. Uh, and then there is uh, uh, some text fields like the name, like the star name. The star name is uh, uh, required, as you can see with the red asterisk. And then there are some other fields. Uh, one is a, is a, is a checkbox is a checkbox field that by which I'm able to say I'm not private, I'm a company. So I can just uh, uh, appoint this as a company and then another field will, uh, will appear as a dependency of, the, of this checkbox field. And then I'm able to fill this further text field with the name of the company. And then there is uh, another field that is an email field uh, where I am able to fill the, my, my, my email. When I uh, simulated sending, so the submission of this form, nothing happens. Great. <laughs> Just a moment, let's. Ah, esatto. Just a moment, no problema. Because we made some mess trying to, to change the PHP DI the setup, so probably something. Okay. Sorry. Ah, there is a problem with the, <laughs> the application because we, just a moment, sorry, really sorry.
Ok. Should be fixed. Ok. So I reload the form. Um, so when I send this form as a default action, some, uh, some uh, default validation process will, will be triggered, okay? Because I didn't fill this field, because, uh, uh, and also because this company field is not filled. Or this one is triggered because that field has been, has been defined as required here. Okay, that this is the surname. The other one uh, is because it's, uh, it's triggered because in my validate form, I just wrote some, some code. For example, in this case is, uh, is triggered this, uh, this, uh, this condition that uh, if the personal info type is true, then uh, the personal info company name cannot be empty. Okay, so in this case, uh, uh, I'm able you, you can see that I'm able to get the value of the field uh, to check it, uh, um, calling the get value method of the form state. Uh, that is an object that has got a lot, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of methods uh, that uh, uh, makes us able. Just a moment. Okay, it's quite difficult. Okay, with this form state interface, we've got a lot of methods. Drupal core gives us a lot of instruments to check to check the, the, the behavior and the state of the form. So in this case, I'm simply getting the value of the user in the validation process. If the value is true for the type field, then I will check if the value is not empty for the, the company name. In that case, I will trigger, I will, I will trigger, I will, another method of the form state object will be called that is a setter or by name that will stop the submission process is here and will output a message to the user highlighting a specific form element. So in this case, I'm also able now to read outline, uh, is a CSS rule, the, the specific element that stopped the, the submission. Okay, let's go on. This is a, a just a, a first, uh, this is a just a first version of our form. I now uh, over, I mean, overcome this validation validation, so I put some, some valid code, some valid values, and then the, the send is correctly, correctly send. Uh, what does it mean, correct submission for this form? I decide what this form should do in how. I decide it just in the submission, submission method of the form, so it means that here in the, in the final submission, submit form method, I just say that the submission in this case uh, is, uh, results in a, in a message outcome, I mean, uh, 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 written on the, on, the, on the form page. Let's make some, uh, some evolution to this form. I made some evolution to my submission form, and this is a nice evolution because in this case, I'm able now, if I refill this form with some new data, so my surname and nothing else because I'm saying that I'm a company, so in this case, the validation will be. So in this case, I've got an upgrade of the form submission because now I am also printing in the page the values of the form that I filled. How do that? This is done in changing, uh, upgrading, I mean, uh, making this evolution in the submit form, uh, calling a, a, a new template, a template that I've defined. Okay, in this case, I'm defining a render array that is calling a team, 
So a template file, a Twig template file uh, associated with a new team that I call the default tall for submission, uh, to which I am passing specific data that are the, the, the filled data, okay, that I can get also in the same way form set gate value. So in this case, I'm saying, okay, let's output, okay, let's define this render array, and this render array becomes the placeholder value of this uh, uh, translated string that is still the result of my form submission that has got also the description of the values, okay? Uh, just quickly, I'm sorry, but I should go <laughs> quickly. Uh, in the module file, I define my new template, team, let's say team, what in Drupal 7 was called a team function. In this case, I associate a new template, a tweak template, uh, defining it in, uh, with a new team, called giving it an index, so it means uh, an identi uh, identification name, and then a template associated with that uh, will be everywhere in my module location, that is this twig, okay? So this twig will cycle in my values, form values, and submit the result as part of the Drupal set message result. But the uh, nice thing is here, uh, another thing that is, is very interesting, I mean, something that has to be mentioned, is this uh, render process. Because uh, uh, Drupal uh, form base, uh, I'm extending the form base uh, class here, that gives us uh, a lot of uh, properties uh, by itself, but doesn't give us uh, the render service from Drupal. Okay, so to make this form, this, uh, yes, this class able to render, render array, we need to use uh, the render service from Drupal. And now, we, here we did it in the proper Drupal best uh, practice way using dependency injection. It means that we defined uh, in the class uh, a protected renderer property and uh, using, extending uh, the container, implementing the container injection interface, few words, uh, we just use, we get the service container of Drupal 8 uh, and say, okay, so we want to inject in this constructor the renderer service. And then we defined as this renderer the render property of the class uh, and means that uh, this form that we are building is now able to render a render array in a Drupal 8 way. Okay, is uh, here quite clear? Understandable? Okay, this is the proper way we might have used a static uh, method calling directly Drupal double dots uh, uh, the service, but uh, this class, uh, this won't, wouldn't have been, uh, I mean, a uh, best practice because this class, uh, we, we wouldn't have done the, the coupling of the code and this class wouldn't have been testable, easy testable. This is the way we should work uh, using services uh, in uh, uh, Drupal forms and not only in Drupal forms. A further evolution of this, uh, okay, just, uh, just retaking, sorry. The, the, okay, we have seen, uh, ah, the states, sorry, I didn't mention the state. Are we able to, to re reproduce this, this behavior? This behavior is um, using uh, this, this state's possibility, state's property, of uh, Drupal, uh, Drupal 8 forms still present, Drupal 8 forms, they were present in Drupal 7 before. So we use this property to uh, inject without writing JavaScript code, the JavaScript uh, behaviors. And we did it in this uh, form of us uh, in, uh, in this, for this property. Sorry, it's not this one. It's this one. For the company name, it just added uh, these um, status property that says that this element will be invisible when the personal info type is, uh, is unchecked, is checked as false. That's uh, 
a very easy way to add uh, sort of uh, JavaScript interaction for Drupal 8 forms as it was in Drupal 7 already yet. So another revolution will be the ability to, for, the, for, the, for the user to, to choose, to choose a, a new, to choose the magazine we want to, to subscribe for. And if you pay attention now, we have a new element that is a select element that lets us to choose some, some possible cell options. Newsletter, quality magazine, mixer, and real estate. What are these elements? I mean, besides the first one that is just a, a default option, newsletter, the others are content types that we already added in our site, a new content type node that we call magazine, that just has got the title, a cover page, a new and a further field that is a, a price, and then also some, some description we are not showing in this view mode here. So what is doing? I mean, we are able in our backend to define some content type and I mean content regarding this content type and we are using this content type for as elements possible um, populated uh, contents of the form. So in this case, uh, the user is able to to select a content type and send the form that, of course, will have the Twig file updated, the submission result updated with the, the, the selected choice. The interesting thing is that how do we do this with, the, with Drupal 8 form API? In this case, we have to add a new service that uh, we define an entity manager. So we had to inject uh, in the form a new service uh, because the form base that doesn't give up by, by default uh, this service to us. So this new service uh, is uh, entity type manager in, uh, in Drupal 8 uh, that is defined in uh, in a core class, in a core file, a YAML core services, a YAML file that defines all the Drupal 8 core services. So we are able to get this, uh, this service that uh, allows us to make the, the sort of uh, uh, crude, so create, read, uh, uh, update, and delete operation we were able to do with uh, our node load, uh, entity load, uh, and uh, uh, metadata wrappers uh, in, uh, in Drupal 7. So thanks to this new service, uh, we are now able in, uh, so the same way, we inject uh, this service in the construct method and uh, uh, give to, I mean, define this service as a property of our class that now becomes this entity manager. So what does it mean? It means that we are now able to create a new select, a new select element that is this one, that gets options as an array of these another property that I call these subscription options that is filled with the uh, the indexes of our nodes belonging to the magazine content type. So how we did this? We just filled the first option as a default zero indexed value newsletter. And then with this entity manager, we get the storage node. So we get all the entities of ID node, the type I need, and we load all of them. And once loaded, we are able afterward, as a result, okay, so we are able here to, to, to fill the, the select element with all the result of our fetching the nodes. Okay. Is everything quite clear? Okay. If you have got some question, you can stop. Uh, although we have 
still have some more things to, to see if we have got enough time. So in this case, now, thanks to this, uh, the user is able to specify the magazine you want to subscribe to. Okay, and of course, the, the twig, as I said, is, uh, is populated as a consequence because, uh, because we extended uh, the submitted data passed to the, to the twig file, okay, with the, the new value coming from the form state get value subscription element. But, okay, as it was possible in, um, okay, we already spoke about dependency injection in the form. As it was in, uh, in Drupal 7, still in Drupal 8, we are able also to perform Ajax uh, responses. How? Just adding to the form elements the uh, Ajax property and uh, writing uh, an Ajax callback, say, an Ajax callback to process, to process the input uh, and respond with the, the Ajax response. Uh, the Ajax property, uh, there is uh, the documentation, you can go through it, uh, and uh, the Ajax property uh, contains specific elements that are all optional. The callback, that will be triggered from the Ajax uh, uh, request, the wrapper that identifies the ID element of the form we want to perform some action on, and the method and the effect uh, might be a replacement, uh, might be an insertion, um, uh, the effect means a fade or dissolve and what the speed and whatever. So taking advantage of this possibility, we can further evolve our form with the Ajax abilities. And in this case, I reload the... Uh, we are able, okay, to fill our data and then to choose, to, to make the choice in the select that will trigger an Ajax request inside the system and still depending on that entity type manager that will get the data and will output the data in a view mode that, uh, that is uh, consistent with a, a view mode, a per, um, also a personalized view mode that uh, I defined for my new content type magazine. I show you this here. In Manage Display, I defined a new, a new view mode. Drupal 8 uh, give us, gives us this possibility by default, we don't need any further module. Uh, it was display suite or view modes. So I here describe, uh, define a new view mode that is composed by cover, description, and the annual subscription, etc. And it will, it will, I mean, run and drive this uh, uh, Ajax response. That of course makes uh, the form more, I mean, communicating. To the, to, the, to the user that is able to, to see the magazine cover, the description, and even the price. Okay, some tricks. I mean, something that uh, in this case, how do we perform on, on the code? On the code side, these are Ajax, Ajax calls. As I said, injecting, I mean, using the Ajax property here in the subscription element of the form and uh, using its properties uh, is option so it means defining the callback function function that will be triggered the change uh, the event will take place the effect the speed and also a progress type in this case we have got the trouble you can see here when i change there is a moment that okay it's too quick Okay, but anyway, it says fetching data with a trouble. Okay. It will not be displayed. I mean, you need to define, you have got two, two, two possibilities. You can define a wrapper property, and it means that the wrapper should point, if you, if you 
Okay, in this case, we, we, I didn't use wrapper because uh, in, uh, uh, I, I use another, another possibility that is an extended possibility because with the wrapper, uh, you are able just to uh, um, act on the ID of an element. Okay, you can uh, insert elements inside it you can re replace the, that element. But in this case, I didn't use the wrapper element because I used another approach that is more extended. I define an Ajax response object. And uh, the HTML command uh, API that uh, allows us uh, to perform uh, further things. I can also change uh, the class property of other elements using these. You I really can do a lot of things using the, um, this uh, HTML command class that uh, actually defines in a PHP way uh, jQuery, jQuery commands, okay? You define a selector and then uh, with these uh, you define which kind of jQuery method you want to perform associated with that AJAX request and response. So, yeah, right. I didn't use the wrapper option, but the effect in, in this case, I might have done it just with the wrapper option because I'm now just uh, uh, replacing an ID, okay? It's nice here to, to mention this. Uh, Okay, here you can see that I'm using the Ajax uh, property saying that uh, uh, in the, sorry, but okay, you can make me further question afterward. But anyway, the response, okay, this is the callback. The, disc, the callback, what is going to do is uh, getting the result, okay, of the subscription. So I need the result uh, of the form state, what the, the, the user selected. Then I define a new response, uh, Ajax response object. But um, just afterward, uh, I call a Fardam function that uh, calls uh, this, the same entity manager that gets the, the content and uh, dresses uh, a, a new render array, uh, but in a view mode. Okay, so I'm saying, okay, take the, 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 the chosen selection of the user, associate, taking this value, call a node or entity node and render it in the view mode subscri subscription form. This will be the output render array for the Ajax response. But furthermore, I need to do something because this will work this will work because it will find an ID element uh, that uh, is not rendered uh, at the beginning or in the form because it's defined uh, as an HTML tag uh, with the value of null, but uh, with an ID that is magazine view. My Ajax callback will try to find an element as substitute. But, um, okay, this works, might work for the first time. Something we have to pay attention to is that when I define the render array for the response, then I have to also to add a new attribute, a new ID for this, this uh, uh, retard element that will make uh, further and subsequent new Ajax calls uh, able to run. Otherwise, a further one will not find any element with that ID is looking for, okay? See, this is a little trick that uh, will, will save some time to you as it didn't for, to me, okay. So the HTML command is a replace? Yes, yes, it is a replace. Uh, is an add command, uh, magazine uh, is a new, HTML command that uh, um, is a, it corresponds to the HTML in jQuery. Okay, you get a selector and say HTML. Okay, and then this, this the, is the element that will point to the jQuery selector, and this is the the content. I mean, it is the yes, is the content is the HTML uh, value. Maybe it's 
No, no, no. The, 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 the command is HTML. This is the pattern where these uh, objects are uh, defined in this API. Yeah, sorry. I mean, if you see, yeah, okay. Man, anyway, I'm, I'm just saying, the, take the jQuery selector dot HTML, parentheses, the, the content, okay? So we'll fill that element with that HTML. That will do. Uh, okay, five minutes. So this is HTML. I mean AJAX. Uh, I said that uh, we are going to speak about uh, configuration form in five minutes. Let's try, but I did. It. I mean I said it. So uh, how is working this uh, this uh, this form? Uh, you probably have noticed that this form, when I load it, uh, has got some default value, Italo, and also the email value is a. Uh, is filled by default. Why? Because we associated uh, to this module a, um, a setting file in the config install folder of the module, and that's the proper place to, to, to put the uh, settings file in Drupal 8 uh, module that says uh, that uh, some settings, okay? Set some settings for for the form, and the form when it's built is going to to fetch these uh, these settings from the config factory service of Drupal. Easier, okay? So default value this config is, uh, I mean, uh, is reaching the config factory contain service of Drupal and fetching the data of that file, YAML file, and getting the personal info mail in this case. Okay, being quick, I'm able, I've associated a configuration form just defining a new route, a further new route to this model that say that at this part there is a new class that is called DD for config. That in, our, in our case, uh, will extend the config for Maze class. Means that I'm I'm building a configuration form that is very very similar to the form base one, but uh, is adding uh, the possibility for us to define uh, to uh, to. I mean, define a new method that is get editable config names that returns retard, retard. We need to define this uh, re, um, this method and return something that will be the set settings we will now able to to override with this configuration form. Uh, just to be more understandable, in the root, uh, I will I have decided I decided also a menu link that points to my new configuration form. The new configuration form has got just one silly element, that is uh, a checkbox that uh, let us perform an override, I mean, a new definition, an interactive definition for an administrative user that, of course, doesn't want to, 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 to change the code, but it needs a, a back-end interface to change uh, default settings that is, in this case is the, sorry, something. Oh. In this case, uh, I can check this, this checkbox uh, and say set company as default value. When I submit this value, then of course it takes uh, the, the settings, uh, and then my new form as uh, as built. Uh, this this value will be uh, checked as default. Okay, this is this gives us the possibility to create setting form for the for the end user that is not a coder, and uh, this uh, is performed. Of course, in the submit form method, acting on the configuration object that the form base class gives us as a available, but as a editable. So these values are now editable. If I wouldn't have defined and the uh, retard.
this method for uh, the, the, setting, uh, the settings I'm going to change with this configuration form, uh, this operation will not have taken place. Uh, simply will not work, won't work. In this way, I'm now able in submit form to set the new value for these uh, configuration settings in Drupal and save it to the configuration, configuration system. Okay, uh, taking this approach, you can go even farther. 20 seconds, I'm over. And uh, I, because also in the, in the summary of this talk uh, was mentioned also the REST uh, call uh, external service. And uh, okay, there is a, a farther, probably we'll, we'll break this one. Yeah, it is. I need to. Refresh the cache. In this evolution, uh, I added uh, a, new, a new field that is an address field that uh, allows the user also to appoint uh, his address, that is this one, but that, that is a, a, an autocomplete field with geocoding, even geocoding. So when I put Bicocca, then uh, it will suggest me the proper address as a, a result of a Google Maps API geocoding service. And this is done in the code, defining uh, a, a custom service that I defined, I put in the module, and that, uh, I know, uh, okay, before this, uh, I just uh, add a new a new form element that is uh, this one is address that has got some properties that are the root name and the root parameters of a root that will be responsible for running the autocomplete operations. In this case, uh, the root is a, a root that uh, calls a controller, a route that calls a controller that will call a service inside dependency, dependently injected inside it, a controller that will take advantage of a specific service that itself calls a Gazelle Symfony, Gazelle HTTP client interface, etc., etc. Okay. Sorry for all these uh, crazy stuff so quickly explained. I, 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 I hope it was a little bit understandable, and I, I am confident it was. Okay, and uh, it's finished. Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs>